Hey, hello. This is a redo. I have to redo this. Well, I'm gonna uh, do this in, um, well, this first part is just gonna be uh, measurements, location of measurements and how to take measurements. Then I'll do another video how to use the measurements for uh, the slopers, for the bodice slopers. And there's another video, I forget which one, because the music I used on the first one was copyrighted music I did not have the rights to. So, voila, I'm doing them over with my music, my own music that I created, okay? All right, so pattern making and sewing tips with me, your host, Sakaya Michael. Measurements are slopers, but like I said, this is just measurements. And thank you for your support. Okay. Uh, I already discussed before uh, in some of the other videos. Uh, you can get all of your uh, rulers and things that you need, tools you need to make the patterns uh, see-through. Now, you can get them see-through, invisible rulers, see-through rulers, you know, uh, like this, you know, French curls, see-through. You can get all of these uh, uh, hip curves, see-through, uh, two rulers, uh, two inches wide, one 18 inches, one 24 inches. You can get yardstick see-through as well. Um, I haven't mentioned it here, but another video. Uh, you can use a um, a flexible ruler, but instead of using that, just get a one inch wide, twelve inch long, see through or invisible ruler, which is very very flexible. Only difference between that and a flexible ruler is the flexible ruler will keep its shape. You can bend it into a shape and it will stay that way. With a, a see through one inch wide, twelve inch ruler, you, you of course it won't stay that way. But it doesn't matter. It's get the see-through ones because it helps you see uh, exactly what you are doing when you are making your patterns. You can see through them and see your lines and get your marks and everything. Right? All right. The measurements we'll be taking: neck, shoulder, front and back slope chest waist hip arm elbow center front center back All right these are just for the bodice though i will go through entire measurements because uh whenever i'm when i first meet a client for custom clothing i always do full measurements that way it doesn't matter they can call me from the moon and say they need this and that and already have the measurements and I can go ahead with my slopers and make them whatever it is they need. Location of measurements. Okay. This is my second time doing this. The first time I was tired and I just wanted to throw a video up because the time lapse in between videos I don't like, but I have a lot of yard work and taking care of the property here is it's time consuming and tiring and I, and I have a few injuries that kind of hinder me. All right, uh, shoulder, first one, shoulder. Oh, well, yeah, first one, shoulder that I have here, but also the neck, which is just around the neck, of course. Uh, but when you measure the neck, put your finger inside the tape measure as you measure the neck. That'll give it ease, right? You you can take a exact neck measurement, but you will have to remember to put that ease in it. Or when you're making a garment for the person to put the ease in it. And sometimes with certain styles, it'll automatically be placed in. But I like to have it already in there just in case you forget and you have to rush and make something for a client and you forget all about the ease to add it, that is. So you put your finger as you measure the neck inside the tape measure. 
to give it ease. All right. Uh, the shoulder. Uh, right here, you have a bone. There's a bone, which on this side of the bone is muscle. So you will start from that bone to the bone on the other shoulder, going across the back of the shoulder, not the front, because there's more. The neck, uh, you have more on the front neck than you do on the back. Look on your T-shirts and your shirts, you will see that. So you don't want to measure across here because it will not give you the correct shoulder width measurement. So you measure from the bone to bone on the back of the neck, right? Okay, this is for uh, center front and center back here. I'm not going in this line. I'm using it as a guide. Okay, um, center front. There's a dent right here at the base of the neck where the neck ends and the chest begins, right? And you measure from that dent in the neck to the belly button. As I explained before, the belly button is where your waist is. Okay. You're too if you're too used to wearing hips, hipster jeans and pants and stuff, they won't be on your waist, of course. Your waist is where your belly button is. Alright. Uh for this this is a center front from the dent and the base of the neck where the chest starts to the belly button. That's center front. Center back. There's a bone on the back of your neck. Right there, you uh, person tilt their head down a little bit. You can feel the bone better. All right, once you find that bone, you go down to the waistline and the center back. Now, to get that, uh, that dent in the center back at the waist, it's a little difficult to find sometimes. So you just take up uh, some string that you can see with your eyes, of course, a thick string, don't use thread, and you tie it around the waist going over the belly button, right? Going across the belly button. And you tie it there. That way you know exactly where the waist is. And so then you would measure from the bone on the back of the neck to the waistline, which would, which would be in the center of the back, the small of the back. That'd be center back. Okay, center front, center back. We have shoulder, we have neck. All right. Now, as for this here, now we have the string on the waist. Of course, you measure the waist. Belly button around, back to the belly button again. That's the waist. Now, nine inches down from there, nine inches down from your string, your waistline, is where you're going to measure for the hip, right? nine inches down and then goes make sure your line is straight going around and back that's going to be where your hip uh that's going to be for your hip measurement okay all right uh shoulder slope here from the belly button to that shoulder bone so you put the tape measure number one, you put one at the belly button, right? And then you just take the tape and you put it to where that bone is that you measured for the shoulder. And that wherever that uh, number touches that bone, that's your front shoulder slope. And you do the same for the back, from the small of the back and the center of the back. Go over the shoulder to that bone again, and that'll be your back shoulder slope, right? Okay. Um, full. Let me remember. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Uh, these measurements are for the bodice, but I'm going to go with the measurements that I usually take. <clears throat> excuse me. Let's sip some coffee. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to do all the measurements that I take when I first uh, book a new client for custom clothing. All right, so the full length bodice measurement is from the shoulder neck corner where the neck and the shoulder meet. From that corner, 
going over the chest, not the center of the chest, going directly over one side of the chest, that back down to the waist. That'll be the full bodice measurement. Okay. All right. And now the arm. All right. Those measurements I just instructed, that's basically for the bodice. But here go the rest of the measurements. The arm, of course, from the bone down to the wrist right that's one but i like to use the one when i use that as well as a guideline to know where the sleeve is going to be when they're resting but if they stick their arm straight out you tell them to stick their arm straight out and then you measure from the bone to the wrist the wrist again and you should get a longer measurement it's just slightly but that's the number i usually use for a sleeve um, what I also do is sometimes you want that, like if you're making a man's shirt, you know, that arm length you just measured, that would be the sleeve without a cuff. But you have some men who want that, want their cuff to be there. So, of course, that'd be not, that'd be the sleeve measurement with the cuff. Okay. So it depends on your client and how they want their sleeves to fit. Okay, while they have their arm stuck straight out, they bend it at the elbow. And of course, that will be your elbow measurement from the bone to the elbow, right? All right. Um, then from that string on the waist, the waist down to the ground. All right. Some will tell you to the ankle. Excuse me. <laughs> I don't, I, I measure down to the ground because the majority of the men, uh, pants I make, they want their, uh, even women, even women, they want the cuff of their pants to be like, I mean, literally a quarter inch from the ground, you know, a quarter inch from the ground. Some want the heel of their shoes to show, so it'd be like one inch from the ground, but majority of the ones they want it like just above the ground so you would put the pants length right or the bottom length full length you would measure from the string down to the ground all right of course you have waist to the knee uh you can take thigh and calf measurement if you want that's if you're making skinny jeans and tights and stuff I've very rarely made stuff like that. Uh, unless you're dealing with a Jamaican crowd. You're dealing with Jamaican women. Yeah, you're going to need that thigh and calf measurement. Okay. Because they like them. Uh, some of them like them. You know, fit. Fit, I fit. Uh, okay. We got a full length. Oh. And. Oh. Uh, Full length, like if you're doing dresses or uh, over garments for uh, for the Muslims, or either full dress, full uh, full dress measurement, full length dress measurement. Okay, from the neck again, but straight down to the ground, over the chest as well, but straight down to the ground from the neck and shoulder measurement. That'll give you full length measurement. Okay. So that should be all your measurements. Uh, this crotch measurement. When I, in the pants sloper instructions on my videos, you really don't need, because uh, when you take the hip measurements, nine inches down from the waist, you take the hip and you, as you see, the crotch is a little bit below that. So when I, in the pants sloper instructions, three inches down from that waist, I mean, from that hip measurement is where the crotch would be. That's like basic for most people, you know, even the very tall ones, you know, but if they're really tall and I'm talking like so close to seven feet, you might want to take that crotch measurement Okay, they tell you, and this picture is telling you just take it from the ground or the ankle up to the crotch. 
Uh, I learned if you just have the person sit in a chair, perfect, you know, sit upright in a chair, then you would measure from the waist to the base, the, you know, the, the seat of the chair. That will give you your crotch measurement. But most of the time, that uh, nine inches down from the waist and then another three, three inches, that's usually it. All right. And I do believe that's all the measurements that you will need from a client or from yourself if you're making clothes for yourself. That would be difficult to measure yourself. You have to have someone else do it, of course. But that's how you take the measurements that you will need to make garments. All right. So like the video, subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter. That's uh, Sakayan underscore Michael on Twitter. And leave a comment. Please leave comments. Let me know how I'm doing. Uh, if I forgot something, because I am not perfect. No person on this earth is. So speak your mind. Be a friend. You know. I'm not soft, but don't, you know, be polite. <laughs> All right, so enjoy your day. Thank you.